All right, I'm Joe Crisera, America's Service Sales Coach, and welcome to the Service MVP Podcast, everybody. We have a special edition, and today we have a special guest, a very special friend of mine, Amanda Triolo with Grasshopper Services. And Amanda, welcome to the program today. How are you doing? Thanks, Joe. I'm super happy to be here. Facility is incredible. Well, thank you so much for uh, flying out here to our facility and uh, meeting with us. Uh, Amanda and I are working on a super uh, great new initiative to help Call by Call become the new norm, right? Amanda, why don't you go ahead and start by telling us about how you first got started with Call by Call Management with your team and you know, you, you yourself dive, dove into it. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so service is a area of the company that I focus heavily on, and I'm in the day to day with all the technicians at Grasshopper. And so, what I started to learn very quickly is that in order for me to help my technicians become the best that they can be, I learned that we had some deficiencies, and there were things that we weren't quite picking up on to make sure that we're providing an excellent customer experience every single time. So, I was like, this was before I even knew what call by call was. I was like, I implemented call by call without even knowing what call by call was, no, actually. Really, really. So then you see this movement on social media mm -hmm. called call by call management. I'm like, okay, that's what they call this like, thing. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Like, I'm just trying to babysit everybody. No, I babysit, yeah. right? What would you call it? What, what would you call it? What about, Coach, what about that part? Coaching, just coaching people. Coaching people, people right? okay, yeah. Cool. So, when I was talking to the guys about it and my team and implementing it, Really, it was just a tool for me to best understand what's going on in the home, what are the customer's needs, wants, desires, and what are they actually saying to you based on what you're informing and educating, mm -hmm. right? Are they are they engaged with you? Do they care? Do they not care? Are they emotionally moved by what you're showing or telling them, right? And I'm a big advocate for showing, not telling. So are they being emotionally moved by what you're saying? And, and what are their concerns? Do they not want to be cold in the winter? Do they not want to be hot in the summer? Is indoor air quality a concern? So... Through doing call by call management, I learned that we were actually missing the boat on what the customer was actually telling us that they wanted and what their actual desires were. Mm. And so we've flipped the script and changed the approach to tailor every single customer experience to that customer that's in front of us every single time mm. based on their needs, wants, and desires. And through call by call management, I'm able to help my technicians be as successful as possible while providing an excellent customer experience. You, you know, there's a lot of people who are watching this right now or have a big smile on their face <laughs> because they are like, is Amanda Triolo realize that she's making customized relevant solutions for people? And it's exactly what Uncle Joe teaches. You know, we're some in some ways we're about as different as you could possibly be. <laughs> but, but there's other ways. 90, 95% of what we believe in are is identical. Really, when I yeah. I first heard you talk about some of this, and I think you heard me talk, we realized, you know what, this is something that we uh, need to get together on, right? Yeah. Kind of learn more about it. Uh, well, in, in your experience by diving in and trying to get that uh, customized experience for each client so they feel like they would feel a sense of care, respect, and support, because that's isn't that really that's the it. dynamic behind it there? That's it. So in order to do that, can you give us uh, three keys to what you think a successful call-by-call -call, uh, system would entail? Can you give us like the first key and see what's something you can dive into that could help people kind of, uh, even if they don't come to a class or training, they can start to do what you did, just kind of dive in and start doing some of this. What are some of the things that are the first key? In the home or through call by call management? I'll just leave it to your imagination. What do you think is the first place to start? Where do you think you would start? The Training. first place to start with that. Go ahead and tell me Training that. Training with technicians is the absolute necessity to the ground level. Uh, under having your your technicians understand how you want your customers to be engaged with what kind of relationship building what are the important things to make sure you hone in on and what are the important things to make sure you're addressing like you know at grasshopper we address the entire home and system as a whole and not just the symptom of the problem and so do your technicians understand your process and your why behind it? All that starts with training. So I would say number one is training to each company's systems, processes, and procedures. That way you have something that you can build off of and you have a ground level of a customer experience. Well, I always say that training is the number one service that the management of the company provides the team and that everybody on the team has a right to be trained, right? Yep. How important is it that you... Uh, that you make sure that there's nobody left behind when it comes to that because that's one of the biggest problems that we get busy on. What would you say to people who get busy and they say, well, we're going to have to put the training on hold for a while until we get uh, all these other emergencies taken care of. Go ahead and tell me about that. I think if people are pausing training and they're still paying for marketing, they're pretty much sending dollars right out the window because companies that 
pause training their, their technicians or their team on any level, and you're still paying for marketing to drive business in, you have business at your fingertips that you're literally losing by the second. Mm -hmm. And by not honing in on every single technician on every single car, every single comfort advisor on every call, or every single CSR and every single phone call they answer, mm -hmm. then you're losing the mark and you're just throwing money out the window and your marketing dollars are not effective. And I think the employees start feeling, the culture starts feeling a sense of frustration too. Yep. I, think it, I think it's a character issue, right? Like we talk about how important training is and how everybody's got to be at the training. And then all of a sudden, hey, guess what? Because we're chasing a dollar, we, we're going to sunset yeah. the training for a while, right? Yeah. Uh, what message does that send to the team when we do like pause it for uh, the busy work that takes place and things like that? What message does that send to the team? It leaves you having a culture of people that have no idea what's next and what's, what's in it for them, right? And so people need to be able to feel inspired, empowered, and committed to growth. At Grasshopper, one of our values is we choose growth. And a part of that comes with training, constantly training and developing our staff. And if I had a team of people who weren't being trained or developed, then I would have no team at all, and I would not be able to hold the culture that I have. Mm -hmm. Well, as we know, the grasshopper always can only move forward. That's and, it. And, that, uh, and I, when I heard that, I was like, man, uh, this woman is a sister from another mother. <laughs> she definitely uh, fits, fits the bill in my, in my case. So number one thing is training. I think that's a very wise thing. Uh, how about number two, if you can give us a second uh, kind of a pro tip that we can't sunset the training. Training is a service we give and it's got to be there. It prevents the emergencies that you're probably, the emergencies you're going through were probably could have been prevented if we had done the training, right? Absolutely. What's number two, would you say, in that list of things that could make call by call more effective? I think number two would be communication. And through communication, emotional intelligence and psychology. Mm. At Grasshopper, we train a ton on mm. emotional intelligence and psychology in understanding what type of person we have in front of us and what type of personality that person in front of us is, and then tailoring our communications and the options that we present and the manner in which we handle the call to the person that's in front of us. And that helps make us that much more successful because you're literally providing that customized experience every single time. Like for example, somebody who's analytical most likely is an engineer they want to know all the data. Yeah. They want to know all the calculations. They want to know the intricate details. Somebody who's uh, a customer who makes their decisions based off of emotion, they want to be able to be brought down and see, feel, and understand what it is in front of them and how that impacts them in their home and their safety and their comfort. Mm -hmm. So there's different, and then there's people that are just simply driven by price, right? And so for your people who are driven by price, how do you handle them? How do you approach them? So. Communication, emotional intelligence in psychology is, is number two for all things success in call life. Yeah, and there is a, in service MVP, that's why I think we're, XM, we're really related in a lot of ways here. The service MVP, the difference here we provide is the psychology and the source material mm -hmm. is provided uh, to our clients to make sure they realize that I'm not the genius. I'm just learning information that's bringing us to you. I think you you feel the same way. I think it's like Amanda Triolo, you're a visionary. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but but the bottom line is, I think you're just a source. You're the conduit that brings the information to the to the guys. Tell me a little bit here about how do you uh, answer a question where people would say uh, that uh, you know my guys are never going to get psychology or things like that. What would you say there? I think that as we move into 2024, um, we're experiencing a different evolution within the trades, right? And the trades are becoming that much more imperative to relational business, but the world as a whole is becoming more relational. And I think that people who miss the mark on psychology and emotional intelligence are going to be behind the curve on where this industry is headed and a lot of how we understand business as a whole in the economy today. And so. It's not always about price anymore. We don't just only have price-driven buyers. We have buyers that make their decisions based on relationship, how confident they feel with you, how trusting you and your company are, many different reasons. And for that, emotional intelligence psychology are the two biggest roles that, that play in how we interact and deal and manage and handle customers in front of us. And so we train our guys a ton on that because we want to know who we're working with, who we're dealing with, and make sure we're tailoring everything to that approach. Do you think the, the call by call leader or somebody like you who dove, dove in with help your people, you could kind of remind people that the, the, the guys may have a blind spot and you're kind of, as a call by call leader, do you think it's important to learn that and then fill in the blind spots for your Absolutely. guys? Is that a good way of putting it for you? you it's a wonderful it? way of putting it. You know, for example, I had one of my technicians call me last November 
and they're like, you know, they need a new boiler, but I'm going to never, I'm not going to be able to sell it because the husband's not here. And I'm like, okay, well, what is the wife telling you? Because through what you just told me through how I asked you on how it was informed and educated and what her feedback was, she doesn't want to be cold in the middle of winter. Mm -hmm. That is her urgency right there. She does not want to be cold. And so sometimes it's just, they're so focused on the technical and the mechanical side of it. All they need is that different perspective of, oh, wait, her urgency is emotional. She doesn't want to be cold in the middle of winter. That is my focus with this customer. That is awesome. So I think that's really great. So it's really, and that's right, maybe the guys wouldn't be able to become uh, our time psychologists, but as a team, we can kind of notice uh, where we might miss a gap there. Yep. And you got, you got more than one person looking at this situation now uh, to kind of remind people or uh, yep. advise them in a way about how we can speak to this client in a way that's more meaningful and relevant to them. That's it. That's really great. Well, I didn't mean to sum it up too good because you have to <laughs> didn't give a chance to answer any question. <laughs> there was no question there. We're uh, both passionate about call by call, and we firmly believe in it. You know, call by it. call, by implementing call by call at Grasshopper, we have shaped the trajectory of where we're headed as a company just in being able to have an individualized, tailored approach to every single customer mm -hmm. and equipping my technicians. And they understand when my technicians call for call by call, they're like ready and eager and they're like, this is what we've got, this is what's going on. Mm -hmm. And now they get to a point where they're like, we already know what you're gonna ask, so this is what I'm gonna tell mm -hmm. you. I already know what the urgency is. So they're trying to be, almost become their own call-by-call -call manager yeah. and take themselves out of that. Thinking. They're kind of predicting, after you, after you get enough help enough, enough times, you're like, I got this one. Yeah. I, I said exactly what you said three calls ago yeah. and <laughs> you kind of <laughs> learned what you did. Uh, let's talk about uh, step three or there's a third, uh, thing that could be done uh, to kind of uh, dive into trainings. Number one, uh, what was number two was that? Was that? Number two was psychology. communications, but the psychology and the emotional yeah, intelligence. Yeah, emotional intelligence and the communication. Number three, what's that? I think number three would be simply just process. Mm -hmm. I think understanding process and how you want every call handled from start to finish and so, so for companies that are a strong brand or companies that have a brand promise or a brand mission, technicians need to understand that mission in order for them to go live out that mission. So mm. rather than calling it process, maybe number three should be called mission because at Grasshopper, we are mission driven and all of our uh, service calls, phone calls, every uh, decision we make both internally and externally are all based on mission. But from that mission stems how we how we do what we do and why we do what we do. Mm. And all of my team understands, believes, and finds purpose in our mission, and they live that out every single day. And while they're living that out every day, that means that they know why they follow the process. They know what we serve above and beyond every time means. And they know what that means inside the home with the homeowner. Another one is we commit every day to be a team player. They understand to be a team player, call by call is a part of it process is a part of it, making sure they're passing the torch to the next department correctly is a part of it, and all that inter intertwines with the success of the company. How does this match up with that, uh, that when you mentioned the team, that this is uh, assistance or a service for the team, mm -hmm. that to me the primary thing I've seen with Call by Call from my aspect of it is that it has to be presented to the team as a service to you, right? Okay. To, you've had, how many, could you expand on that a little bit more? So when uh, the beginning of the year, we understand for our technicians what they want to do, plan, and achieve for the year. And our job as leadership at Grasshopper is to help make all of those things a reality for them. In order for us to help make them a reality for them, they understand the effort that they have to put into it to be able to help help themselves, right? And so, you know, my purpose as a, as a human, as a leader, is to help lead people to become the best versions of themselves. And so I find a ton of passion in equipping, empowering, inspiring, and motivating my team to be the best that they can be. But through that, I have to understand what's important to them and what matters to them, right? Mm -hmm. Some people aren't always motivated by more money. Some people are motivated by time. Some people are motivated by their dream house they wanna buy. So understanding what it is that motivates them helps me lead that person more appropriately to make sure that you understand what I'm trying to do at Grasshopper and you're a brand representative of Grasshopper and because of that, this is what we're gonna do and I'm gonna help make your dreams come true too. So it is understanding your people and then your people knowing that you've got them, you're supporting them and you're there as a tool to help equip, empower and motivate them to be the best they can be. So not only does the external client get a customized relevant service, mm -hmm. but it's also important that the internal 
customer in our client, yeah. in our company at, at Grasshopper in your case, uh, gets that personal customized service to, re- to live their dreams or to get their so, uh, emotion, emotional we say, needs. But. Yeah, we say often at Grasshopper, we treat our employees so well that they treat our customers even better. Man, our focus is our people. That's a great tagline. You yeah. should think about that, right? <laughs> Write that one down, everybody. Uh, that's a good one there. Uh, uh, now, now, as you probably know, one of the biggest reasons I uh, had Amanda come out here, I invited her to come out to Los Angeles here to meet with our team, is because I really consider uh, Amanda a visionary and somebody I, I would say she probably doesn't. I'm, I'm going to use this term, a new term that maybe she doesn't, a futurist. You know, somebody, somebody who can see the future based on the trends that we see happening today. Uh, I don't know. This could be. I mean, this is off the record. I didn't even tell you we're going to prepare you for this one at all. Uh, but you know, uh, is there any way? Uh, you know, you're younger than I am, and I'm I'm so I'm learning I'm learning new stuff from you. Some of the newer stuff from you. I got some of the older stuff I've got. I think the combination of both of us together can't be beat. Tell us um, if you can. We could open probably open that door and take a look into the future. What do you see for the future of call by call? And uh, could you give us some things that you could you can share? If you can't share some things, I know you got some proprietary uh, secrets that are coming yeah. up here. Uh, but you know, what are some of the things that you can share that you see in the future of call by call uh, management and call by call systems? Yeah. So sometimes I think I challenge people to think right. All if you're on Phones Pro with Service Titan, all of your co- calls are recorded, and you can always reference back to those calls. So let me ask you a question. Why are we not understanding and having documentation and records of what's actually going down inside of the home? I think that as we progress to the next year, especially utilizing artificial intelligence, call by call management, you're going to see a complete revolution of call by call management that's going to completely innovate the trades to a next level, not only for the training of our internal teams, but for uh, liability purposes, for serving your clients at higher levels, for standing by your work, for understanding processes, procedures, deficiencies, where somebody needs more training and development. But most importantly, is your brand being represented properly in the home? And are you exposing yourself to any open liabilities? There is so many facets where call by call management and artificial intelligence is going to innovate this home service space. It already is. But I think as the next six months here progress, there's going to be absolutely game-changing innovation. You know, when I hear you talk about this, what I'm seeing is uh, kind of a, cl- a cleansing. You know, it, the I would say the uh, when people talk about like ter- terms like billable efficiency, and we're like, I don't know why they use the word efficiency in the service business because it's like the most. If I had to say, I always said, if I had to put my worst enemy into something that I hate him, he would hate doing. doing we put them in a service business without any training because <laughs> it's not it's the most inefficient business yeah. it could possibly be. But what I see what I'm hearing you say is here is that we're going to have a much cleaner, a much cleaner, neater uh, service package yep. for our clients yep. that gets right to the point and saves them time, yep. uh, saves the employee time. They don't feel like we're, we just wasted time with the client saying the wrong thing or doing the wrong thing. And I think uh, kind of a, I just. But by the way, this is a neater service package. Am I, would you say I'm on the right track with that? Yeah, I think being able to streamline um, the service package and have full accountability, right? I think when we talk about neat, neat in my head equals accountability, right? And accountability unpacks all the things. And so I think having technicians inside of homes where that customer experience is really taking place is an, an overarching theme of straight accountability right. that I think will be eye-opening to many home service contractors once they start to understand what is or is not happening for them. Well, before any of you get scared about the word accountability, that Anna said, <laughs> uh, the word accountability, just to, just to make sure we know I'm not on the same page, the word accountability is really mainly a celebration that s- since you know you're being measured now, yep. that things are going to be able to be reported and heard and measured on every call, uh, most of the time it's like when you know that's happening, uh, we all on our, become our best behaviors. We all do the, use our best intelligence. We all perk up and make sure we're paying the best attention. Yep. When we know we're kind of being watched in a way, right? and even if there's a possibility, the illusion of yeah. being watched, it kind of does uh, bring out the best in us. I think more, like Michael Jordan plays in front of 50,000 people. He's going to play better than if he plays in front of two people. He's just that's it. You put the energy out there because you got all these fans that are rooting yeah. for you, right? 
Um, talk about that a little bit about accountability being a celebration. How much celebration takes place at Grasshopper when people do achieve their goals? Which it sounds sound like by your oh, standards yeah. that your team does achieve a lot of its goals. Tell me about yeah. what celebrations happen there. We celebrate the heck out of our team. Um, my goal as the leader of Grasshopper as a whole is that not just Amanda wins because Amanda's the owner or Grasshopper wins because Grasshopper's the company. I want my staff to make more money than I do, have more time, help their dreams come true, help their goals come true, and help change lives, right? So our mission statement is mm -hmm. we create opportunities that change lives and lead people to make great decisions. That is my commitment to my people that I will create opportunities that will change your life, right? And so celebrating the successes is just a part of who we are. And we celebrate loud and we celebrate proud. One of our values is we work hard and we play hard, right? And that's how we operate every single day. And so we have confetti poppers, we have cake, we have champagne, we honor them in front of the entire team. And when they're able to cross something off their list or achieve one of those things, uh, it's, a, it's a loud celebration there. But it's, it's imperative to so that people understand and feel like they're a part of something that's bigger than themselves. How much how much how much laughing goes on during the training? Because <laughs> that, that's always a sign of a good training. If people are having fun and laughing, yeah. and how, how how much fun is that being There's had in the training? Forget about trainings. Just on a normal day to day, Joe, <laughs> that we never stop laughing. <laughs> right. That's what it's about. Well, business can be that way when you have proper values and you have a mission and you have a culture and you have people who believe in what you do the accountability part comes easy this, this is really every every guy real, realized that i tell you when i first got in the truck uh, i was like man this is the luckiest day of my life i i get paid to, to drive around and help people fix their stuff and yeah. get to meet new people and new opportunities i think a lot of times we all kind of lose uh, track of that i think call by call kind of helps everybody uh, the team work together yep as opposed to uh, individual is being isolated by yourself, having all that pressure on one person. Well, they feel supported. They know that there's somebody always there for them, no matter what happens. If they're stuck on a call, if they need help, if they need assistance, there's somebody there for them sitting in that idling position at all time. That's just meant to be an added tool or support for them. Well, Amanda, first of all, I just want to say thank you again for taking the time to come out here to visit our team yeah. and, uh, and meet with us and yeah. definitely uh, you know, I would say two. We put two heads together. It's better than just one of us together. So I think we're. I think I, I love. I've enjoyed what we've. I've learned so far from you being here this week. Uh, tell us, do you have any final thoughts for the people on this podcast? Like any kind of a final thoughts you'd like to leave them with, uh, in your heart? What do you feel about that? Yeah, I think um, speaking of innovation and speaking of where this industry is headed, uh, call by call management is is soon to be fueled by artificial intelligence. If you are uh, curious at all as to what I'm talking about, the website is cxc.ai. And, you know, we've talked about it a ton this week, Joe. I think that uh, call by call as a whole is such an instrumental tool. And when you pair artificial intelligence with it to maximize the success of your team, maximize that customer experience, which ultimately way increases revenue, it's absolutely game changing. And so, that is on the horizon. It is very close. It's being beta tested right now, and I'm super excited for when it launches. Well, I think we've all been there when we uh, type something in the chat GPT, and it, it made us all feel smarter. Like, yeah, that was a good article I just I just wrote yeah. <laughs> in 15 seconds, right? Uh, or it was a good it was a good uh, job description, or a good uh, yeah. you know uh, what do you call it employee correction, or whatever I wrote up. Yep. Uh, I think we all. I would say this, uh, human intelligence and artificial <laughs> intelligence, if you take both those together, you're just going to get more intelligence. That's really the whole thing. Yes, and when people have an open mind and they're able to look and understand that artificial intelligence is not made to replace people, but to empower people and give them that added tool, I think that the, the people who fail to innovate soonest, more than anything, are going to fall very far behind because it's already here, it's happening, it's something to embrace and it's something to be excited about because the possibilities from what I have seen personally are endless. Well, one thing I can tell you is that Service MVP and uh, Grasshopper, we're, we're gonna be leading in the front of this uh, in the front of this parade. Yep. Because uh, that's really what I want. Because I, I, I got want... goosebumps just talks about it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I want this for our team, I want yep. this for our clients, and I really want this for the industry. I really believe that it's something yeah. that has been a missing piece but to kind of clean things up. I think everybody knew what they should be doing. Just going to make sure the accountability is there to make sure it's happening. Amanda, thanks so much for visiting with me Thank you, this Joe. week. I appreciate that. Appreciate you.
Thanks, thanks everybody. We'll see you on the next podcast.